Hi, I'm Elaine Briggs, Director of Education and Innovation here at FutureFit Training. I'm here today with Duncan Stevenson uh, to formally introduce our partnership with the Royal Society for Public Health. Over the past year, we've been working closely with the RSPH to bridge the gap between exercise and fitness and public health. Um, and part of this has been the successful launch of the RSPH Level 4 Nutrition Qualification. We strongly believe that exercise and fitness professionals have a huge part to play in the health of the nation and a solid understanding of nutrition and the effect of diet on health is essential for professionals to promote and advise their clients in addition to knowing when to refer them on. Duncan, this was very much the focus of the Going the Distance report published between the RSBH and UK Active, um, which looks at how fitness professionals can play an enhanced role in supporting the public's health. Would you like to give us a bit more background about that report? Certainly, yes. So, as an organisation, RSPH is a big champion of the wider public health workforce. Um, and the wider workforce is anyone who has the opportunity or ability to positively impact on the public's health through their day to day work. And there's around uh, 17 million people in as part of the wider workforce. Um, we know that health and fitness professionals are a constituent part of that. So there's 400 sports and fitness professionals out there, of which around 40, 50,000 people are exercise professionals. Right. Um, so in keeping with that, what we wanted to do is better understand the extent to which health and fitness professionals were supporting uh, the public, public health. Uh, and we found that around 85% of people that took part in our survey with UK Active said that yes, they do support their clients' health and wellbeing, overall clients' health and wellbeing. Right. Um, but around three quarters said they could do more. Um, there were a number of barriers though around this. Um, so for example, um, one of them is around um, not knowing healthcare professionals. And I guess that's where yes. RSPH comes in because we are the home of the public health workforce as a, as a, as a, as a, in a sense. Um, and therefore that's why this partnership is great because it, it brings in exercise professionals into that workforce. So Duncan, can you tell us a little bit more about the content of the level four qualification? So the level four qualification is looking specifically at how nutrition and diet impacts our health and well-being. So it's right. looking at four main areas. So one is around nutrients for health. Yeah. Um, it's looking at energy and calorie uh, requirements across yeah. the life course. Yeah. Uh, we're then looking in a bit more detail about the effects of diet mm -hmm. on uh, health and well-being. Yeah. And then also looking at legislation and advertising uh, around foods. Okay, and can you tell us a bit more about the impact of diet on health and well-being? Yeah, well, it's really interesting because this looks at uh, all sorts of areas, but including uh, diets for specialist populations. So oh, right. you might know that uh, veganism and vegetarianism has increased quite a bit over the last few years. I think one in 20 of us are now vegans, wow, believe gosh. it or not. Gosh. Yes. Yeah. And that's great because people do it for various reasons. They might do it for ethical reasons mm -hmm. or for health reasons or for environmental reasons. Um, one thing to be aware, though, is with any diet like uh, vegetarian or vegan diets, uh, it's it's important that they're well planned and balanced yes. diets because uh, sometimes they might be lacking in certain proteins, yeah. uh, nutrients. So, for example, um, iron, you might your body body doesn't necessarily absorb iron through plant based sources as oh, it right. would from an animal based sources. Okay. So it's looking at those kind of things. Yeah. And that's really important, actually, for fitness professionals, isn't it? Because currently the, the nutritional information that, that they would receive as part of their initial training wouldn't cover all of those those different um, populations. Absolutely, um, yeah. They, this is, this is I, I think, the first qualification yeah. of its type, actually. Yeah. It responds well to that, yeah. but also for people who are just interested in specialist Absolutely. diets as well, like vegans and yeah. vegetarians. And I think as our fitness professionals are, are coming across more and more people um, who are, are using plant-based diets or vegetarian diets, um, who are very informed, um, they also need to be informed in order to um, give advice right. and, and know when to refer on to, to dietitians. Yes. Um, one of the really exciting parts mm -hmm. of, of this partnership, I think, is the fact that there's an opportunity for learners, once they've finished this Level 4 um, mm -hmm. qualification, to actually become members of the RSPH. Yes, yes, they? very much um, so, yes. And that is quite an exciting opportunity. Um, they can use the letters... Um, RSBH after their name, which yes. I think gives further credibility to uh, to their role when they're dealing with clients. Um, but what are the other benefits? Yes, yeah, so, so just a bit of background on mm. RSPH. So we're a 
We're 164 years old this year, so the, we're yeah. the world's longest established independent public health body. So we, we yeah, that, well, there you go. And we, we're a qualifications awarding organisation, but we're also a charity and we campaign on health and wellbeing issues. Everything from looking at social media and its impact on health and wellbeing uh, to making our high streets more health promoting. So we do a huge number of campaigns. We have over six and a half thousand members internationally, and that includes many healthcare professionals, right. doctors, directors of public health, etc. Yeah. So this is a really good opportunity for people who are working in the health and fitness space to become part of this wider family um, and interact more with um, with healthcare professionals and, and other people in the public health workforce. Excellent. And what sort of benefits can they get? I'm assuming that they'll, you know, our learners all um, like to take advantage of the fact that they can continue their learning yeah, and, and, and stay yeah. in touch with it with the RSBH. Yeah, so there's a there's a whole host of benefits. So as well as the use of the post nominals MRSPH mm -hmm. after their names, which is adds to credibility. Yeah. Um, we are a health education charity, so uh, we can provide um, any members uh, with direct access to a lot of support. We run events and conferences which uh, people can get access to. Okay. We run a, a series of webinars on everything from sleep to vaccinations. Oh, um, and then in addition, we're a publisher of two peer reviewed journals. So one of them, Perspectives in Public Health, all members get access okay. to online. For more information on the work that RSPH is doing and the initiatives we are supporting, I'd encourage you to visit our website at rsph.org.uk. And for those of you that are interested in getting started on the RSPH Level 4 qualification, head to futurefit.co.uk or contact us via our social media channels.